Big Dirty's getting some love today. It was like 20 some degrees last night. And uh, maybe it was 20 degrees, I don't know. It's been 20 degrees every night. So this isn't really a cold start, but he uh, Honest communication and I never have any issues with, uh, with him starting when it's cold. Mad because I haven't driven him in a while. Pretty much since the the road trip, I brought the brought the trailer home, and uh, that was about it. So I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let this guy warm up. Basically, I am uh, running into town today, and uh, there is like another shop cabinet that I'm gonna get. It's like a 48 inch wide one, and uh, just so I can put a little bit more of my paint stuff in there. Because right now I don't want to like clutter all my pretty cabinets up with that. And then I think we'll uh, go ahead and start tearing apart the, the Jay-Z for the, the Supra. So Trevor just told me to tell you guys where I've been. I've, I got a girlfriend, so that's where I've been. Now I've just been working and doing holiday stuff, working, doing holiday family stuff. And then I took my Cummins up yesterday to get the tranny built so me and Trevor can tow rig with the new, new tow riggies. So yeah, he's gonna work on Big Dirty. So uh, I didn't make a video going to get this thing, but, uh, but check this out. This is a uh, like a Gladiator brand cabinet. It's uh, 48 inches wide and 72 inches tall. And I think it's like 18 deep, kind of basically the same same situation as the the rest. But uh, I got Jesse over here. Jesse, you gonna help me unload this thing? Where sure. have you Where have you been? I've been living my life, the trying to make a family life now, uh, holidays and girlfriends. And he has a job, so and, yeah, seven, seven. and a new daily that you've been like doing all kinds of crazy stuff yeah. to him. He has this, uh, this little Civic Si. You're you're about that Honda life now, dude. That's fun. Si, super intoxicating. You think so? Let's, let's yeah, peep, peep underneath the hood. Uh oh. That that e tag. Oh wow! Look at you. You got an intake. Didn't you do a clutch on this thing too? Yeah. Nice. Uh, Exity stage two. Well, now you just need a turbo on it. So what about doing? And then it'll be as fast as my Saab. It was difficult because I had five grand laying around from selling that one J swap. Laying around? Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> CT supercharger for the Civic? Or should I be responsible and rebuild the, tr the truck transmission since it exploded kind of? Yeah, so that's why Jesse hadn't been at any of the, the drift events kind of towards the end of the season was because uh, his, what, what tranny is the 48 RFE? The 48 RE. 48 RE. And uh, he has a Justin Bieber hair now, you got the flip. I gotta freaking cut this thing, man. And, uh, and yeah, so that's where Jesse's been, blowing up tranny in his truck. But purpose of this cabinet, as uh, you guys remember, I got the these new age uh, products ones right here. But uh, you know, I didn't wanna kinda clutter them all up by just putting all this random paint stuff in there. And it's, it's just way better to have paint stuff like that in an actual metal cabinet. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and move this thing out a little bit and then install that guy or just move it over there at least.
right, so the new cabinet is all the way, I guess not really installed, but uh, I should probably move that so I don't scratch the super bumper because that would be sad. But uh, yeah, you could see I got all my random paint, all that paint that was kind of over here. I got all that crap kind of stuffed in there. I did all the gallons kind of too high on the bottom. Did those guys like two and almost three high to get those in there. And uh, and yeah, so that that works pretty well. Um, I uh, I almost need another one there's because there's a bunch of this crap. But I think I'm gonna make like David take all that crap somewhere. I think I needed to do something with this eventually. All right, so back in the shop uh, the next day. Like I said yesterday, I want to do something with this. So uh, I think I'm gonna put it on the engine stand and tear it all apart. Uh, I moved the super that was sitting here, and you can see that it's got. It's got a nice leak and uh yeah it's like everything you have leaks oil yeah everything i have leaks oil but uh we're gonna go take it for a little drive and show you that it still doesn't work yes we're gonna cruise this thing around and uh see if we can figure out why it's still running kind of lean and crappy and all that stuff so maybe put a little bit more fuel in it too because we uh we haven't put very much fuel in it yeah. so we'll put we put some fuel in it i uh I put eight gallons in it, and that's all that it brought it up to. I don't know if I should put... Uh, Would you put 85 in there or what? Look at those AFRs. Yeah, those AFRs, are, we got some Taco Bell too. Oh, yeah. AFRs so lean, it doesn't even run. All right, so we, we gained some more fuel, but uh, not any more fuel over here. So it's still doing the whole sputtering thing. We're at negative eight. Like it had a tick when we like kind of turned onto the road and then like now now it's like fine i guess now i just need to look and see what uh, what intercooler pipe popped up
turbo anymore. Turbo Supra. It, land, it ran lean and boost or rich and boost, so we just decided to unturbo it. But it's like not, there's no milky stuff in there. And there's no blow by. It's weird. Well, that was just condensation. See, but you can hear the exhaust doing this weird stuff now, too. And this is what the air fuels do. Unless maybe like in, like injectors are dirty. Nah, uh, injectors is sweet. Well, I mean, I don't say that, David. It could be injectors. Let's check the compression. Maybe. We could do a boost leak test too. But normally, it's just the intake. Mm -hmm. Their battery's almost dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, should I hold this like really close to my mouth? Turn on the David button. I just, I just found, I just hold it, if I hold the camera farther away from you, it's fine. Instead can't, of like... Can't hear the Dave noises? Well, I mean, you just don't get the mic right next to your mouth. And then you're okay. Yeah. So we are going to do a, uh, a boost leak test on it. We, should, we, we, already, sh we, should we show him? Yeah, yeah, let's show him. I mean... I get, it'll probably run with this. Yeah, just <laughs> I get, leave I it. I can just plug that on there and it'll run. So, I stuck well, my hand just well, over this thing and you could hear it like like just sucking from somewhere and it like didn't, it almost didn't even affect the idle at all. So it definitely has a boost leak somewhere. And I hope that maybe it's on the intake manifold or something stupid like that and that's why it never really ran that good anyhow. David loves these clamps. I mean, you don't need them for an intake. Well, not an intake. But, but right now we're doing a boost leak test, so it's yeah. actually beneficial. If you guys want to see how I made this, you should have clicked on this video right up here. Right, where? Right, where? Right. Where? Right. Uh, over here, somewhere. <laughs> David, did you like the air compressor on? I don't know. I haven't been here for a while, so. <laughs> Probably. Huh? Since since Wednesday, I think. No, I can't, I came and uploaded videos, but I didn't really do anything. This is like, is that is that 120 psi? It's like 40 pounds. Oh, okay. Or you think I should go turn the regulator down to like? No, 40 pounds is fine. I I think it was 40 pounds. I'll probably go check. Yeah, before you put 120 in it. Well, you can like point it at me if you're gonna leave it running. Well, you're just walking over there. I was just getting the the this, and you could play some like nice like elevator music. Taking forever. It's right here. Should I get some soapy water? Yeah. And a flashlight. Have almost been something that would pop. That's too hot. It just like 
character. That's the intake, though. Well, I guess that makes sense, though, because it's yeah, it's to the intake. Tight, tighten it. There's something over here's leaking because you can hear it. I mean, tighten this one first. The lower doesn't look like it's leaking. Yeah. But I don't know about... Well, just start tightening stuff. Just tighten that one that's leaking over there. Shut up. Sounds like a lot of stuff over here is leaking. Holy shit! Um... Maybe the PCB. It's... Oh, fuck! The PCB could be bad, because it's not supposed to do that. I guess. Let's go O'Reilly really quick and get one. Maybe it's pressurizing the crankcase, like... Look at that. It'd have to be. Yeah. Well, take, actually, take it off and put a bolt in it. Hey, quit that shit. Or maybe it's kind of halfway working. No, it's not. It's not working at all. So the PCV might be alright, but it's pressurizing the crankcase because of this right here. So that's why that thing was going Crazy. like bonkers over here. That was cool though. Had a nice beat. Yeah. Alright, so it is uh, now holding a little over 20 PSI. You could still hear a couple little things, but uh, primarily that's these little intake boots and stuff. Um, this O-ring that was right behind this uh, blow valve it's basically kind of held in there and there's like a little flange that kind of sits in. That O-ring was completely cracked and it was leaking quite a bit. Um, this l coupler right here, that one was leaking quite a bit. And uh, I don't know, the bad thing is, is all of the leaks that we found are on this side of the piping and it's map sensor. So it technically shouldn't really even matter anyhow if there even was a boost leak. Uh, it should still read the correct air fuel. Um, if you guys are wondering what this vacuum line is, this goes basically to the power steering. There's like a little valve and stuff on there. And then to a uh, bluff, like a tile bluff, a fake tile bluff valve in the bumper. And uh, it has a factory one on it, so it's fine. And uh, so I just hooked up this line that kind of, I guess, equalizes the pressure so that, you know, waste gates and all that stuff are kind of, you know, they see the same pressure over here as they do on the intake manifold. So still kind of being weird. Um, but I guess we'll go we'll go drive it and see what it does. If a coil's not firing, it's uh if a coil if if a coil isn't firing, it goes it goes rich. All right, so so this is going to be our little uh, our little test. So Dave thinks if a coil doesn't fire, it, the engine will go lean. I think if an injector doesn't fire, it's going to go lean, and if a coil doesn't fire, it's going to go rich. So how we're going to test that is we're going to fire it up and uh we're gonna test it. Okay. Let's let the O2 sensor warm up for a sec. Oh jeez. So it's just idling it like Super, super lean. Well, that's because it's like idling too lean. Damn it. That's weird. Unplug the uh, idle air control. That's fine. At least it'll idle.
What about injectors? What about injectors? Pull injectors. Pull pull the front injector off. So it goes lean both ways. Yeah. So. Who's here? Like. And so. Turbo. So it's this is an NA two JZ GTE now. It just has all the turbo stuff on, but it doesn't it, make any. It doesn't. Up for that. It doesn't make any. No, I know. It doesn't make any turbo noises, and it. Uh, it doesn't even run. It barely runs. <laughs> Yeah, listen to this. Normally it would make turbo sounds and like... Oh no. So, da so David blew up the exhaust wheel on it. I mean, probably blew itself up. It's probably seized. So yeah, we, we don't know exactly what's going on with it. He kind of thinks it's a, a compression issue, but it doesn't smoke. It doesn't feels, blow by. it doesn't have any blow by. It feels really even between all the cylinders, you know. It just you know? doesn't idle even. It just doesn't idle. So I, I'm thinking maybe like dirty injectors or bad coils. Well, we just pull all the coils and it's, it is even. Yeah, no, but they could be like randomly like misfiring or the injector could be kind of like halfway dirty or something because it has a new fuel pump. It has a new fuel filter. It has fresh fuel in it. Tank was too clean for the fuel injectors and clogged. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they could have been just rusty from being because he said it's never ran good. That's that's the issue. So it's never ran good since it's been swapped in there. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I don't know. And, and honestly, maybe it just like the exhaust wheel or like the shaft on the turbos just broke because literally it just it does not make any boost now. Maybe I, I bet it was over spinning the turbo because all that boost leak. Yeah, I mean, it was probably over spinning the turbo and probably blew up like the turbo. It, yeah, it was, it was, it was ripping. So I, mean, I don't know. It, it, it wasn't ripping like because it was like making boost, but it wasn't like using it. It was weird. It like had boost there, but it like just didn't make yeah, any maybe, power. Maybe like maybe it shot the exhaust wheels out or something. So maybe the turbos are just just ruined. I don't really want to pull them off though. <laughs> I mean, this, this thing is just wants to be VVTI, I think. Well, I have one sitting over here on the ground. So we could just, we could just smash it in there. I mean, that'll, be our, well, that'll be our project for tomorrow. It's gonna be manual swapped. Yeah, we, we can do it. Yep, yep. All right, next on the list of uh, things is a uh, compression test. Yep. Like this. See how lean this thing really was running, if it was. Yeah, we'll look at the spark plug. A compression test. <coughs> Let's hot compression now. What the f was that? What? What's that noise? Huh? What's that? Do that again. It was at like 150. All right, yeah, 150 on that one. Yeah, compression test was uh, mostly 150. The number two was like 140, 142-ish, and uh, 135-ish, some somewhere in there. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Kind of odd. It's good that it has good compression, but it's kind of weird noises though. Kind of weird that it's it's like running lean, but like rich, but like not making any power, and well, like not making any boost now. So. Um, I think, I mean, obviously this thing, it, it leaked a, a crap ton over there and it is gonna get a manual transmission swap um, and a single turbo and things like that. So it's like, I should probably just, you know, pull it out and throw a manifold and a turbo and all that stuff on, but I don't know, we'll, we need to see. So yeah, I don't know what, uh, what kind of made me think that, that buying kind of like a, you know, still in the project stages, like not fully dialed, Super would, would make like a decent daily. Um, you know, when I bought it, I did have, or I felt like I got a, a pretty decent uh, deal on it, you know, compared to what they're kind of selling for now, especially since it's a hard top and was already GTE swapped and, you know, pretty much just needs like 
some little things here and there as far as like swap to a manual single turbo. Um, I didn't really know that it was going to have all these issues. He said that it, you know, basically kind of never ran well since it was, uh, since it was started uh, or since it had been swapped. Um, so I was like, oh, you know, it's going to be something stupid. You know, it's a Jay-Z, you know, how, how, how hard can it be? Um, so as of right now, it, uh, it leaks quite a bit. You've seen all that. That could be power steering, but the oil pan was leaking a little bit as well. Um, I think the wastegates are just stuck fully open right now, or they're stuck closed or something. I, I don't think the turbo is like actually like completely blew up, but uh, definitely doesn't make any boosts anymore. So I don't know. This uh, kind of the whole idea behind this thing is uh, is I was you know since I did get a, a good deal on it, I was basically gonna kind of like daily it. My dad was gonna get my uh, blue Saab wagon. I was gonna cruise this thing around. Do some like little mods and stuff here and there so that I could like have like a, a super to drive and uh, while I was working on this thing and uh, then once this thing was done I was going to sell this thing you know or or something else but, uh, but yeah so that's I guess kind of not in the plans right now because this thing kind of like needs its own build and uh, you know I'm, I'm pretty tapped out as far as you know projects and money and all that crap so um, this is going to kind of get pushed on the, kind of on the back burner. I, uh, I do need to start on this. So, uh, so yeah, I think I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to shuffle some cars around. Um, I think I, I got some like storage places lined out. Uh, I'm probably going to take my Datsun to my house and then maybe put the drift car underneath there. Um, just so that I don't have to like move it in and out. And that, that way when I go to like repaint this thing that it's not completely, you know, I don't have to shuffle like 20 cars in and out of the shop all the time. Um, I guess that's about it. I don't know. Yeah, I know I said in this video I wanted to uh, to yank this engine apart. And basically by doing that, I was talking about, you know, pulling the turbos off of it and uh, doing some other stuff. But we'll kind of talk about the plans with uh, with this engine specifically and, uh, and what I'm going to do to it in the next video. I think that that'll probably be it. Um, so, yeah. Appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed me kind of messing with that thing a little bit. And, uh, you know, we kind of figured out a little bit more of a game plan with it, which is pretty much the engine needs yanked out of it. And, um, but yeah, that's, uh, I guess, project project for another day. So just uh, another money pit, like, just sitting around. Um, again, see you guys later. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys later.